Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Bregaton. Let's manage I'm the crusade. Born. Commander, Nebia greets you with a slight nod. I've got some information that might be of personal interest to you. It's up to you what you do with it. Personal interest? What do you mean? I mean that we're not talking about a military or political matter here, but rather a matter of the heart. Tell me. Soldiers have been gathering in the graveyard to play cards. We usually turn a blind eye to such things. Though it's against regulations, we let them enjoy themselves as long as they don't cause too much trouble. And that's usually the case. But recently, my people have noticed Socio among them, and the gambling seems to be having an unhealthy effect on him. As you know, as you keep my nose out of other people's private affairs, with all these spies and cultists, I have too much on my plate as it is. But I know you're close to him, so maybe you should do something about it. This isn't an official report, just a tip off from a friend. Thank you for the information. You're welcome. Before you stands a tall, fit man whose dark hair is already tinged with grey. He greets you with a brisk military salute. My name is Captain Sealkind. I command the vanguard of a mercenary group called the Blackstone Company. We've come from Andorin to assist you. I want to know more about your unit. The Blackstone Company is proud to be recognized as one of the finest Andorin mercenary regiments. We're not a bunch of unscrupulous sellswords looking to oppress the innocent and serve the tyrants of the world. No. We're adventurers eager to get involved in a dangerous enterprise and leave it with pockets full of gold and a clear conscience. Which is why we held a vote among our units. We're glad to accept Queen Galfrey's invitation to join the crusade. Though some of our commanders, um, <clears throat> did voice their displeasure with the sum she offered. But like I said, we Andorans are a free people who cannot be pushed around and who cannot be bought. Only convinced. Why do you join up with us? Queen Galfrey paid for our services, but please do not think we're fighting for gold alone. We're true sons and daughters of Andorin, so the ideals of equality and resisting enslavement ring true in our hearts. We will be glad to stand by, stand in the way of demons who seek to force mortal kind into bondage. The bulk of our company made camp in Erosian, but the vanguard, consisting of our finest soldiers, if I may add, was put under your command. I want to know more about you, Captain Sealkind. The man flashes a genuine smile. I don't even know what to say. I am a soldier. A bit of an explorer, just an all-around honest man. Get on with your duties. Yes, sir. Glad to be under your command. Captain Sealkind salutes you again, smiles, and adds in a softer voice. It will be an honor to serve with you, Commander. If you have any questions, let me know. If you need to talk, I'd be happy to lend an ear. Erebeth said that we're under threat from demons with unusual abilities. Like the Nabasu that attacked your army at the Lost Chapel. They're very powerful and they're growing in number. You haven't found out where they're coming from, have you? Arushalai looks around shyly and continues, lowering her voice, as if entrusting you with a personal secret. I think I... I'm not sure, but... I think I have a lead. I know where to find someone who can lead us to the source of their power. Who are you talking about? A hag by the name of Jerunika. She used to live here before the fall of Sarkoris. When the demons invaded this world, she happily took their side. The old cannibal knows many secrets. You just have to make her talk. Does this Jaronika also have special powers? Her? I doubt it. But still, be careful. She is a very old, very sly creature. And she's incredibly dangerous. Now, where can I find this informer of yours? The place is called the Green Gates. I'll show you how to get there. Long ago, before the world wound, there was a Sarkorian fortress there. The Crusaders built a small chapel. But for many, many years, the place has been home to nothing but abomination and squalor. How did you find out about this? Rushlai quickly looks at the faces of those present and seems to curl in on herself. Quietly, almost whispering, she says, That is a long story. I'll tell you when we get there, alright? Thanks for the tip. Happy to help. It's just... Rushalai looks around cautiously again and lowers her voice. 
You won't go there without me, will you? I want to personally make sure this monster doesn't escape you. Sounds like a trap. A commander. Nevia sounds worried. Our scouts report that a goblin tribe was spotted south of Dresden, beyond the river. Having goblins so close to the world wound is bad news. We should check it out. So this is the new content that was just added to the game. Uh, they just added new DLC for free. They also added uh, two new archetypes. Because goblins weren't in the main campaign before. They're in one of the DLC. Also, they have a prominent role in Keymaker. Uh, why are you worried about the goblins? Well, the hordes kind of destroy everything they can get their hands on. But you know that already. What's worse is they worship Lamash too. And often all sorts of powerful demons as well. A demon with a private goblin army can be a serious threat to the crusade. Very well. I will see to it. Thank you. I'll mark their camp on your map. Jeremiah Gretlin lowers herself into a bow. Good day, your commandership. It is we, the artistic board of the Next Door Theater. We're still working on our piece about your heroism. We've even taken on a few new crew, uh, crew members. We now have a master of stage equipment and scenery. It's my granddaughter, Tina. Tina, say hello to his commandership. We're faced with another dilemma. We simply can't decide on a climactic moment for the act that's all about the Battle of Dresden. Here. You listen to the options. Grandma Gretlin holds up a scroll before her eyes and begins to read, running a gnarled finger along each line. Option 1. The commander, so that's you, launches himself out of a catapult and smashes down the fortress wall, allowing the armies to rush inside. Option 2. The commander, so that's you again, masquerades as a succubus and creeps into Dresden in disguise, then opens the gates to the crusaders. Option 3. The commander, so that's you again, rides to the attack on an enormous mountain goat, or should we call it a battering ram, and it breaks down the city gates. But what say you? I like the version where I ride on the back of an enormous mountain goat, but where are you going to get a goat that size? Uh, we're still working on that part, your commandership. It's hard to get a goat in the middle of the world wound, especially an enormous one. But we'll think of something, don't you worry. Your Mike Gretlin and her entourage move away, but the voices project so well, they can easily hear the rest of the conversation. That's a nice detail too, because if they're in theater, they're probably used to projecting their voices on stage. Do you think the commander will mind if we add the goat and the catapult to the show? That way, the bit where he breaks down the gates will make for much better drama. Did you forget that the role of the commander is being played by a cyclops? How are we going to launch Lampkin out of a catapult? We're we going to find a catapult that won't just break under his weight. Calm yourself, Tenna. It's just a minor snag. You can't achieve success without a few difficulties along the way. We'll think of something. You'll see. Commander. I have alarming news. Sir Char seems to be ill. He stepped back almost completely from commanding his people. His Everbright Crusaders are a large and experienced force. Our strategy relies heavily on them. Please talk to him. Already have. It might be time for Sir Char to step down and hand over the leadership to a younger, more energetic knight. He's not a young man anymore. It must be a struggle to keep up with his responsibilities. But what do you know about Sir Char's trouble? Just rumors, Commander. They say it's like his mind is somewhere else all the time. He's anxious, but won't say what happened. Sir Char is respected. When people see him acting strangely, there breeds uncertainty in the ranks. I'll talk to Char. Thank you, Commander. This is a necessary step to maintain our fighting ability. Oh, this guy. A hell, Commander. Before you an aged yet fit and sturdy Garundi stands at attention. His dark skin has an earthy tone to it, and crystals sparkle forth from where his hair and eyebrows should be, fully identifying him as an Oread. Captain Harmadon, Chair of your Staff Council by order of Her Majesty Queen Galfrey, here to deliver a report. I'm on this council too, Sela salutes briskly. 
We'll be racking our brains on how to improve troop morale. I reckon the key is to back up our words with actions. Lead your soldiers by example, and they'll be eager to follow. Drawing on my experience as a paralictor, my advice is to maintain calculated moderation in every regard, be it an incentive or penalty, and to be decisive. We have no need for doubts or turmoil. So Grey Boar is in one of these councils as well. That's why it's a good idea to hire him beforehand, because each companion offers different bonuses as you progress. I don't remember what Grey Boars are, but I think one of them is really good. Might be one of the troop choices, though. I'm doomed to be your advisor, but do you know what that means? That you are doomed to listen to my advice. To start things off, is an incredibly novel and deep thought of you, for you. A loyalty, passion, and morale. All these can be easily be bought with money. Commander, permission to report. Alright, permission granted, I guess. And we've encountered a problem. Although we're still getting volunteers, we're now seeing cases of desertion. Many who joined the Dresden campaign believe that their duty has been fulfilled with the victory, and they're not keen on staying in the garrison. Those from Canabras wish to return home and rebuild their ruined city. Lastly, there are those who are afraid of lingering in a place where demons might show up with a retaliatory expedition at any moment. My suggestion is to improve living conditions for the privates, raise their pay, give them extra rations, reward those who have distinguished themselves on the battlefield with commendations and gifts. Soldiers don't want to leave armies that appreciate them. I feel for those folks. We have to convince them to stay. I think we might get some help from the servants of the gods. Now tell the soldiers that the danger is not yet past, and inspire them to keep up the fight against evil. As long as the wound is open, the whole world is in danger. We can't just go home and live like we used to, no matter how badly we want that to happen. Most of the crusaders are volunteers, but they have no right to subvert military discipline. That kind of attitude is tantamount to treason, regardless of who expresses it. We have to identify the instigators, arrest them, and administer harsh punishment to make an example of them. This problem is quite simply solved with coin. Handing money out to privates is practically throwing it away. We need to pay the officers handsomely, then they'll figure out how to raise their subordinates' morale. Tell me, Captain, what does the Staff Council do? In short, make sure that when whenever orders are given, they're executed properly. Our job is to keep the soldiers' morale high so they always follow their officers' commands without question. As for the officers themselves, we'll look out for any unseemly or incompetent types who subvert the troops' trust. I have questions for the council. Understood, Commander. Ask away. Zila, what do you bring to the council? It's pretty self-explanatory. We're not fighting for a sawmill here. This is a crusade against the Abyss. When you're up against demons, you bring a paladin. It's a rule that's tried and very much true. Or two paladins, or three if you include, uh, Irabeth. A uh, Regil, what kind of help can I expect to get from you on this council? I have extensive experience being in command, and as a Hell Knight, I possess a firmness that some of your other officers may be lacking. The essence of my council is not to spoil your troops, but to maintain their discipline strategically. Amidst a chaos of war, a general has to be a beacon of order and purpose for their soldiers. They'll be just as grateful to receive rewards or lashes from such a general, and most importantly, they won't even think to disobey their orders. Garen, what are you doing on this council? Mostly I'm just waiting for it to end, but since I have little choice, I'll give you some advice on how to charm your subordinates, be they people of importance or simple commoners. I'll tell you the biggest secret straight away. Free. Money. Gold has the most miraculous power there is. Captain Harmadin, why did the Queen appoint you to preside over this council? I'd been in the Osirian Infantry for a hundred years, fighting for three pharaohs. Then, after I joined the Crusaders, I served Her Majesty Galfrey for two more decades. I dare to hope that I've gained decent experience over those years. I see. We're glad to serve. Now, let's discuss our options in further detail. As you command. Sila, what's your plan? The situation is not that dire. Morale is high and we just won a major victory. Some have let down their guards. We have to call for priests and paladins to get it through to the volunteers, and it's still early for celebration. 
If they leave for their homes today, Dresden will fall again tomorrow. And the day after, the demons will show up on their doorstep. Servants of the gods are indeed the masters of sweet-talking others into dying free of charge. All through pretty words. When the choice comes down to inspired preaching or homemade pies, nine of every ten will look for comfort in their home and at their table. Their incentive needs to be more substantial than wasted breath. Fragile, what do you suggest? There's no place in the army for the mindset of playing soldier today, then going home tomorrow. These dangerous ideas must be suppressed with the utmost harshness. We'll identify the most vocal rabble-rousers and exact punishment on them as an example to others. They may be volunteers, but they join the ranks of the Crusaders. We can't abet in their rejection of their responsibilities, or be heading toward complete chaos, and therefore defeat. That's a great plan, if you want your soldiers to run back home twice as fast. They came here of their own volition. You must convince them to stay, not terrorize them into fighting. Darren, your opinion please. Our forces are in good spirits. It's just the euphoria of victory has gone to a few heads. No one can sever them up quicker than the officers, especially those of lower rank. We'll give our deaf oafs, all those sergeants and corporals, a bonus on the sly, then promise to sweeten the deal once they've convinced the volunteers to stay. Perhaps they'll do so over a beer mug, or maybe with a broken nose. Why bother solving problems yourself, when you can push them off on someone else you pay? Your bot loyalty will run out even sooner rather than your gold. When soldiers turn into profiteers, instead of following orders, they start appraising them. They wonder whether or not it's worth their while to obey their general. I hardly need to explain the effect this will have on discipline. At Captain Harmadon, what would you advise? The volunteers believe that we've almost won. Great. Let's not ruin this pretty illusion. Instead, we'll turn it to our advantage. We'll increase rations and pay for the privates, rewarding the most distinguished with commendations and gifts. Who'd abandon the victors when they provide you with good food and even better coin? It's time to expect the troops won't understand that we should, that we would just be trying to appease them. An army cannot stand if it's held together by handouts and desperate promises. We shouldn't lie to our soldiers. We build up flimsy illusions now. The demons will shatter them later. Those fighting alongside us must recognize the seriousness of the situation instead of celebrating victory when the war has just begun. Thank you. Everything is clear. What are your orders? Well, as a paladin, I think a uh, seedless option is the most roleplay fitting. But looking at these in order, uh, from bottom to top. So Harmonin unlocks distributing provisions. Shame around increases by 10 to 15. It, you can do that every 20 days. Which is useless because, again, morale is not hard to maintain just by fighting demon armies. You don't have to take morale boosting effects. Uh, Darren has bribes for the officers. Also repeatable every 30 days. Crusade morale increases by 15 to 20. Uh, Regil hunting down mutiny. Every 14 days. Crusade morale increases by 16 to 25. Recruitment growth for trainable units reduces by 10%. The cost of recruiting mercenary units increases by 10% for 14 days, so that's just terrible. Seelie gives us glory to the heroes. Crusade morale increases by 5 to 10 every 30 days. Yeah, we'll take that. Asila, mobilize the priests and the paladins to raise awareness. Sure thing. Faith has always helped me in my darkest hours. Now help our soldiers too. We just need to talk to them from the heart. Thank you, Commander. Should any other difficulties arise that require your attention, I'll deliver a new report promptly. Alright, Durgalinda Stranglehold. Hail, Commander. A middle-aged dwarf who has clearly seen some combat salutes you with one barely moving, bone-dry hand. On her face are huge, scarred claw marks. A black eye patch covers one eye, but she's watching you with the other, intent and somber. Durgalinda Stranglehold, Chair of the Logistics Council, at your service. We've got ourselves an ugly situation that requires your decision. I hope I won't get in anyone's way if I join you. Rushlai looks around with visible worry. I think I could give some good advice here, if you don't mind, of course. Hopefully this council will benefit from my vast experience surviving with gear that consists of rocks and sticks, 
where any dinner that's not squirming on your plate is considered a feast. All in all, kind of like our crusade. I feel like we're missing someone here. Oh, they ain't Wolgif. I won't lie to you. The logistics are a mess. We need more of everything, but what we do have is in disarray. Crates of provisions are rotting away in storehouses because some idiot quartermaster spilled beer on the papers. That's not Wilser Garms, though. He's, he's top-notch. And fools are not the worst problem. There's also theft. Oh, that's nonsense. There's a saying in the Marine Corps. Um, there's only one thief in the Marine Corps. Everyone else is just trying to get their stuff back. Uh, some officers grease palms to get a helmet with a stylish plumage, or fancy blade from Neurosian. Meanwhile, that means that ordinary soldiers are being armed with barely more than kitchen knives. Hammer and tongs. It's time to give the entire logistics staff the bums rush. The question is, where do we find capable and honest people to replace them? I think Wolgif suggests thieflings or thieves or something for this one. Uh, these scoundrels must be replaced with decent, honorable people. Selfless souls who have proven that they put their comrades' lives above all else, especially their own wealth. Surely, that's who will take the best care of their, our soldiers. Uh, let's get some veterans on the job. People who have had their fill on the front lines, and who know firsthand what life is like for a common soldier. What the rations taste like, how the boots are always the wrong size. My suggestion is to call some experienced, well-connected supply officers from Neurosian. Let them leave their cushy jobs in Mendev and work up a sweat for the good of the crusade. Adurgalinda, what are this council's responsibilities? The Logistics Council deals with all matters relating to supplying the army. Most issues will be trivial and undeserving of your attention. However, from time to time, serious decisions will need to be made. That's when I'll convene the council. I have questions for the council. As you wish. Yes, yeah, so we are going to miss an option here because we haven't collected Wolgif yet. Arushalai, what are you doing on this council? You, you think I shouldn't have joined? Arushalai looks away sheepishly. It's just, well, I spent a lot of time studying how armies work, both Crusader and Demonic. When I was spying, I think my advice might be useful. Or at least, I hope it will be. But if I'm a bother, I'll leave, of course. Lan, how can it be of use to this council? I know a thing or two about gathering weapons and provisions. Compared to the war for survival we had to wage underground, you guys have it easy up here. If things go badly, I can teach you troops to live off the land, and to craft decent weapons from junk. But I have memories of Lance special stew for years. Not sure if those will be fond memories, but they'll remember for sure. Durgalinda, why were you assigned to head this council? Over my years of doing quartermaster duty, I've managed to develop a bit of a reputation for myself. The units I'm responsible for are always properly equipped, armed, and fed. Thieves, scatterbrains, and reprobates promptly get the boot. Bureaucrats, who never seem to have anything, miraculously find everything they need after meeting with me. In short, don't you worry, Commander. I'm right where I belong. I understand. Let's get back to the pressing issue. Uh, let's discuss our options in more detail. Yes, Commander. Arushalai, what are you suggesting? A quartermaster's job is to care for the well-being of the soldiers they're equipping for battle. That means the best people to appoint to those positions are people who really care. Those who keep their fingers warm, fed, and properly armed. I, say fi I said fingers. <laughs> keep their fighters warm, fed, and properly armed. Their fingers, too. Can't hold a sword without fingers. Uh, maybe they won't have the most experience, but that's alright. It's easier to teach someone numbers and how to run a warehouse that is to instill a conscience in them. I agree with that sentiment. Lan, what would you advise? In our tribe, we believe that the hunter's gear should be entrusted to the most seasoned hunter, to those who stock the prey themselves and learn the price of a mistake in outfitting. An old bowstring, a dull spear, a tattered cloak, the hard way. Then that's how it should be in the army. Whoever's responsible for supplies must know war firsthand. They must have dragged themselves through the mud of the battlefield. See with their own eyes how a rotted strap or a boot one size too large can lead to a soldier's death. They must have eaten their share of rotten cabbages and seen carts of horseshoes and pots pull up at their position instead of ammunition because of some clerical error. Assign new quartermasters from the veterans, like Durgalinda here. I bet they won't steal. They won't let anyone else steal either. I also really like this one. 
In fact, I think all their options are good. I think Wolgyps is the only one I probably would lean towards in a Paladin run. Um, but we also have a precedent for land suggested because we have Wilser Garms out, you know, standing outside the Citadel. Adurgalinda, your opinion. There are some great workers in Mendev who have been sitting at home for way too long. But the Queen sent them to us, instead of counting buttons for the frock coats of Nerosian Royal Guard. Let them sort out our supplies. And they already have connections connections in Nerosian. A lot of N sounds in a row. Connections in Nerosian. They could easily have army property decommissioned and later sold to private buyers for next to nothing. And those buyers will just happen to be the same mercenaries we're negotiating with. Berkelinda makes a face. Connections are all too important, as you well know. Everything is clear to me now. Then what's our move? As so Durkalinda gives us equipment from the state. You can say plus one bonus to attack and all saving throws. Then land gives only the essentials. Unit has a plus 10% bonus to maximum hit points. Nurse Light gives us ready for anything. Unit has a plus 2 bonus to all saving throws. I'm going to go with uh, Durga Linda's here. Uh, is that the best roleplay option? Hit points aren't that essential, but I do like land suggestion. Yeah, none of these really stand out roleplay wise. I think we'll just go with um I don't know, Dorgalendis is a little underhanded. Yeah. Like this first sentence here is a little dishonest, so I don't think we're gonna go with hers. I think we'll go with the lands. A land. Our new quartermasters will be veterans. Veterans know what's what. They won't do their comrades wrong. They'll see that they're always fed, healthy, and warm. Their fingers, too. That is decided. No matter what our new quartermasters are like, there's no possible way they can be worse than what we have now. Hey, don't insert Wilster that way. Wilster's actually a good quartermaster. The results will be reported to you. If anything else comes up, I'll call the council right away. Oh, it's managed some crusade affairs. Um, next time we'll talk to Dorgalinda, Sealkind, and Char, and Harmadin. We still have two more advisors to get as well. Alright, so everything is ready for the relic's augmentation. A skilled craftsman can do some work on the relic. The relic will be augmented. Alright, the fate of the Phylactery of Stevanius the Rotten. The Phylactery of Stevanius the Rotten was destroyed during a failed lich-creating ritual. However, grains of his spirit are still locked in a small purple gem that got into the commander's hands. Now the wizards can, or sorry, wizards can place it in an item or weapon to give it evil properties. All right, this is not the item I thought it was. Uh, we're gonna go with the ring though, because you get a very good ring out of this. So place a phylactery into a ring. The commander's servants have carried out the decree. Alright, so hunt for the kidnappers. Uh, skill trackers and interrogators will hunt down to destroy the band of demons that has been kidnapping children. Uh, adds 1500 diplomacy experience points and 60 energy points. I'm not going to form a diplomatic council yet. I want to rest first. Because forming a council only takes one day, so if I rest... On the next day, as soon as I wake up, it's going to trigger that next conversation with, um, well, probably one of the worst characters in the game. We do it my way. All right, let's not do onion soup right now. Now I will try to determine the best strategy for extinguishing a tent on fire, where the attempt must be made from inside the burning tent. Hey. Don't even think of it. It's not only dangerous for you, it's dangerous for the rest of us. 
Don't you remember that I asked you not to conduct any more experiments involving fire in our possessions? No, of course you don't. I mean, especially in Dresden, we're not even in a if you camp. Dare. Alright, uh, Airbeth's eyes are vacant. Her thoughts are clearly somewhere far away. Seeing you, though, he snaps to attention. Hail, Commander. I have taken care of the dragon that was attacking our patrols. That's one less problem to contend with. Now we can take the extra lookouts off dragon duty, reassign them to more useful tasks. Excellent work, Commander. Alright, now we can start the Diplomatic Council, and then we'll, um... We're gonna head out next time and go exploring for a bit. All right, orders to Airbeth. I've already read that though. Right, Airbeth has been appointed squad commander in the Vanguard. Right, so we can form both councils, uh, forming a military council. A council of officers seasoned in the art of war will help the commander to implement new tactics and diversify his army's ranks with more skilled units. This is probably the best council, because you do get new units for your army, and uh, it upgrades the old units. It's... it's fun. Uh, forming a diplomatic council. The crusade depends on the support of Neurosian and foreign countries. The diplomatic council will see to it that no political problems interfere with the regular inflow of gold and recruits to Dresden. And with the uh, diplomacy tied up, we can't do any more relics. I'm trying to remember what the, all the relics do, and which one I need for Wolgif. Because this is... Gravesinger. Uh, this is armor and I think a spear. This upgrades Soul Shear. Or keeps it the same. There, there's a couple options for Soul Shear. Uh, this I think is an amulet, and... Maybe armor? I don't, I don't remember all of these. This one I don't remember at all. Once I make it, I'll, I'm sure, you know, it'll come back to me. Uh, so I have healing the giants. I'm not too worried about that. Oh, uh, this one's repeatable. This was not, we're going to knock this out. So healing the giants. A group of warriors has been subjected to a dangerous potion that has turned them into giants. They need to be cured. The crusade morale increases by 20. Don't really care about that. I'm just doing it for the, uh, to get it out of the way. Yeah, the new update also added a new, uh, couple new archetypes. One for the fighter and one for the witch. The fighter one looks... Looks okay, especially now that you can stack damage reduction. Might try to make somebody into that. It's called a Defender of the Hearth. Yeah, we'll worry about that later. Either way for now, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.